the object of this lesson is to take a drawing that I do in Photoshop. We're going to transfer it into Illustrator and transform it from a vector or from a rasterized pixel drawing into a vector drawing. And then we'll take that vector drawing and import it into Flash. And we'll work on uh, doing a simple Flash animation with a line drawing. So, uh, having said that, I'm going to go ahead. I went to File New, and over here I've got Width, Height, and Resolution all set to. Uh, 1,000 pixels, make sure this is not set to inches, 1,000 pixels, and then finally resolution again at 1,000. First thing I'm going to do when I come in after I click OK is I'm going to make two more layers. So I have my background. I don't want to work on my background layer. I'm going to do a sketch on this layer, and this is going to be a simple sketch of a monster. And uh, I just grab my brush, and I want my brush to be uh, large for kind of big, thick lines. But uh, let's just go ahead and draw some kind of monster in uh, Flash. And I'm just making this up. Let's say this guy has some horns. And uh, I can put scales down his back. And let's go ahead and give him some funny legs and a big belly. And maybe some arms. And I can uh, just do basically an outline. Now, that's an outline of a drawing. And I think this is going to help uh, guys who are feeling like they're not really strong drawers. They can do this uh, little layer on the middle layer is going to be uh, dropping down the, I drop down the opacity in the middle layer. And now I can come back in here and I can do a little bit more careful drawing. Uh, maybe I'll make a smaller pen. And at this point, I've got my background drawing. Notice I'm on top layer now. I'm not in the middle layer. And if I draw my line drawing now, it'll be a little bit more careful. And here's my monster. And so this will be quick. But as I'm drawing this, notice that uh, the lines are kind of big and thick. And I'm going to take these lines and I'm going to change them from a pixel or a raster drawing in Photoshop. And I'm going to change these into um, a vector drawing in Illustrator. It's very simple to do that. And I'll have a nice line drawing that I can pull easily into Flash. Now, Flash already does vector drawings. But I just don't think the line quality is quite as nice. So this may seem like a couple of extra hoops to jump through. But I think it gives me a nice line drawing. I'm going to take this guy now. Notice that I deleted that uh, semi-opaque layer in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Come into Illustrator. And I'll say uh, File New. I'll say OK. And now I'm going to paste this in. I don't even have to save this file. All I want to do is increase its size. If I hold my finger on the Shift key, it should keep the same proportions. Let's try that again. And so this guy is now going to be a vector drawing. If I were to zoom in here and look at uh, these lines, I notice these are all pixels. But if I change this and I go to Object, uh, Image Trace, and make an expand, again, Object, Image Trace, make an expand, now it's going to change that into a vector drawing. I'm just going to copy that. I'll go into Flash. I'll say File New. And at this point, uh, I always change my color to any, my background color rather, to anything other than white by going to right clicking on the stage, going to Document Properties, and clicking OK, changing that color. And here is the image that I just created in Illustrator. Now, I can't work with this the way I want to right now, so I'm going to hit Control B. That breaks it apart into separate objects. I hit Control B a second time, and now I've got an image that's very easy to work with. So I'm going to take this guy, delete everything but the line portion, and uh, that's really very, very simple to do. And I just delete all these little white marks. Try not to delete the black, because that's my line. And as I come through here, you can see this doesn't take very long. Now, when I do this, I don't get a really black black here. If you want this to be darker black, shift select all the different portions, and I can come in here and choose either dark blue or black for my line quality. And now I'm ready to turn this into convert to symbol 
and I'll make it a monster. I'll say M, let's say M1, or I'll say monster1, and say OK. Now, remember that if I come into my stage at this point and I try to draw on my monster, uh, what's happening is I'm drawing on the stage and the monster object itself is not changing at all. And the reason for that is the monster object is really in the library. This is merely what I'm seeing on the main stage is merely an instance of that. So I can go ahead and delete him. If I go into the library now, I can select my monster and now I'm in a place where I can edit my monster. So I'm going to go ahead right here and I'll put uh, on the monster layer itself, I'm going to say lines. And on the other layer up here, I'm going to say color or fill. I'll say fill. And now I want my lines up on top, so I'll just drag that layer up on top, and I'm ready to start filling this guy in with color. And so I'm going to do what I call my three, col my three shade color technique. I'm going to choose kind of a medium color. Let's say I choose uh, an orange. And I'm going to just make sure that I'm on this uh, bottom layer. And so now when I draw on this, I can draw right over my line, but really I'm drawing underneath my lines. So I can just draw all this in here. And you can see that when I close that, I can take my paint can and color that in. Now the bottom layer has to be closed in. If I hide my lines, I can see I really just colored in that shape. So again, if I try to take uh, just a portion of this guy, make sure that I'm on this uh, bottom layer. If I try to take just a portion of this guy, and if I were to try to fill this in, I shouldn't be able to fill this in. Actually, it might because it might just jump to the other layer. But if I try to fill this guy directly on this layer, it won't let me because it's not drawn in. Or it's not, the shape isn't enclosed. So I have to close that in before I can fill it. Uh, so anyway, I'll do the same thing again over and over until I get this guy all colored in. And so this is going to be kind of an orange monster. But he'll be uh, different shapes, different colors. But notice the most important thing that's happening right now is that I'm not losing my nice uh, vector drawing that I had done earlier. That shape, uh, all my lines are staying completely intact. I can fill in these little parts that I missed. And again, my lines just bounce right back, and I'm good to go. Now, um, I've got uh, the whole guy is the same color, and that's kind of boring. So I'm going to go over here. I see I've got this orange color. I'm going to choose a darker orange for some of the shading. And I'll just come back in, and I'll choose some of my uh, parts that are furthest away from the light. I'll just darken those in, maybe uh, underneath the eyes. Uh, maybe part of the, actually the beak might be a completely different color, so I'm just going to deal with uh, parts of the arms, for instance, and a little shadow. It's going to give just this appearance that it'll make him look a little bit more three-dimensional. And actually, this guy should be, should be able to select all this and color that in. Let's see if that works. Nope, missed something. So let's go ahead and try to think about all of this, guys. It's just going to all be in here. And if I color this guy in now, that looks good. That looks good. OK. Let's give the eyes a different color. Uh, let's say he's got, uh, let's see, sort of light blue eyes. So I'll take this guy and I'll just come in. Make sure that I'm on that same level, OK, just by selecting that. I see that I'm coloring in on that level. Same thing over here and I can take my can and fill that eye in and fill that eye in. I'm good to go. I can do the three color technique again where I come in and draw a little bit darker blue down here in this part, a little bit further away, so it's just going to give the eyes a little bit of volume. Maybe I put in here some uh, white highlights. If I want that to go actually on the pupil, I can select the pupil and go right there. And then if I want uh, even a lighter blue up on uh, this part of the eye, you can come in here and shade and color that in. Not very noticeable. Let's say we want him to have a purple beak. So I choose kind of a medium purple again. I choose that shade layer and I'm going to come in and this guy is going to all be enclosed so I can color in the beak. I'll come in now with a lighter purple, maybe something like that. And I will give him uh, on the top of the beak 
uh, kind of a lighter purple color. And I can do darker purple. Let's see, if I take this, sometimes it's good to have that guy selected and choose a darker purple. I'll choose that one. Is that darker? Not much. A little bit, maybe. And again, I'm getting kind of this different colors. Uh, I can do the same thing on the horn. Choose that medium color again on the horn. And I'm going to come in here and just draw in where my horn is. Draw in over here. And uh, this guy's ready to fill in. I can do my lighter colors. Seems like I had a light purple or over here. Maybe I'll choose this guy. And I can choose a darker purple uh, for the back here. Okay, so there's a simple example. I'm going to also do something on the uh, back part. I've got, uh, let's see, on the back, let's go ahead and do uh, purple on that as well. And so uh, with the paintbrush, I'll make sure I got that lower layer, my color layer, and I can just color these guys in without losing any of my line quality. So this is pretty simple. Uh, no matter how strong or weak you feel as an artist, uh, coloring this in and uh, doing these uh, lines, uh, these vector lines are going to be nice and clean and sharp. and uh, it's a very simple drawing. So the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is just because some students really have a hard time feeling confident in their drawing. And this is just a little tool to help you guys feel comfortable in being able to come in and draw something and keep your nice clean lines and so forth. In any case, at this point, this guy is ready to go into a flash uh, drawing. I'm going to save this guy, go back to the main menu, and if I click on library and draw this, draft this guy out here, I can uh, make him ready to put into a web page. So this guy has no animation on this one. I could do animation in another version, but this is just to see how to do this part. I'm going to go to document properties. I right click on this stage, document properties. I'm going to make this guy kind of tiny. I'll make him, uh, let's say, 175 uh, by 150 and say OK. And that's really small, so I'll take this guy and uh, move him over here, shrink him down so he fits on nicely. And I can put this guy anywhere on my web page. and shrink this down a little bit more. Document properties, make this uh, 125. Okay, and at this point, if this guy were animated, for instance, I could put this little guy somewhere on my web page, and he would have whatever motion I wanted him to have. In any case, at this point I'm going to do a couple of things. I'll go into File and I'll go to Publish Settings and I can go to... Um, I want this guy to have a transparent background. And if I unclick and then re-click my HTML, I get this window mode and then I can come in here and go to Transparent Windowless. And what that's going to do is when I publish this guy and let me make sure, oh, I didn't give it a name. Let's give it a name. Let's say the output file is uh, uh, monster, I'm going to say 5. And uh, let's publish him again. And now, if I were to put that guy into a web page, let's do a publish preview. Uh, publish preview, I can see that this is just going to throw it up in the upper left-hand corner. But there he is. And if I wanted to change this guy, I could uh, you know, put him anywhere I wanted. But in any case, right now, this guy's got a transparent background. So if I change the color of my background, I'll find out that just the monster is showing up. And I can put him in another kind of environment. So again, we went to Photoshop. We went to Illustrator, made a nice vector drawing. And then we went in Flash. And in Flash, I converted him into uh, an object, convert to symbol. First, I broke them apart, got rid of everything but the lines, converted to symbol, and inside the library, I double clicked on my monster, and inside here, I can add color or do whatever I want to change the monster in here. Okay, so that's it for today. Bye bye.